This is my five life tips for women or men over the age of 50. Um, honestly, these can be used for any age, but um, sometimes when you're younger, you can't grasp. Uh, you're not in a place to uh, actually implement these things. Um, but uh, these are my tips. This is what I've learned and I wanted to share it with you. Hello and welcome to Shelly's Everyday Adventures. My name is Shelly and I'm really happy to have you here. I spent a lot of my life being afraid of what others would think, um, being afraid of being ridiculed, made fun of. There were a lot of things that I wanted to do, but I was afraid to put myself out there. So I spent so much time also feeling guilt over things that I had no business feeling guilt over. So I just wanted to talk to you about these things and I wanted to share with you how I deal with them and um, maybe I can help you out. So here are the five things that I have learned over the years. One is to stop waiting and start doing. It doesn't matter really um, what other people think. Um, I can tell you that all day, but until you actually believe it, then it won't, it won't matter. Um, but I did finally with age, I think it comes with age. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe some people feel that way now in their younger years, but I, it was something I had to grow into. So I've realized that what other people think don't matter. Um, my uncle, he used to tell me all the time, um, don't worry what other people think. They don't pay your bills, you know, and he had a point. They don't pay my bills. I pay my bills. Um, but that was his way of, you know, trying to get me to understand that I didn't need to be afraid. So I, um, my first tip again, like I said, is to, um, stop waiting and start doing. I realized this, actually, I wasn't, I was in my late forties when I first realized this and I decided to, um, in my words, grab the world by the ass. <laughs> um, and I started doing things. Um, I started putting myself out there. Sure. I'm sure people made fun of me. I'm sure that, um, what I did, the things, some of the things I did were less than perfect. I know they were less than perfect. I know that they, they were some things, you know, um, were, I wasn't good at it, so it wasn't great. But um, I started a business about 10 years ago. I'm 58 now, so that would have made me about 48. I started a business um, of dog grooming. And the funny thing is, you know, um, I took the classes and I came home and opened up my business. I talked to another groomer a couple of years later and she told me that um, that was unheard of. People don't do that. It's sort of like um, hairdressers, you know, you go to hairdresser school or cosmetology school and then you work for somebody else for a while. She said, basically, you know, everybody works for somebody else for a while. They don't just take the class and start their business. I did. Um, I didn't think about it. I just did it. That's where the stop waiting and start doing comes in. I just did it. Um, was I unsure? Yes. Um, I had to build my confidence. Obviously I had enough confidence to, um, to start the business. So I did it. Um, 10 years later, I am still in business and I do have people, um, I'm booked solid all the time. So that was one success. Um, and like I said, stop waiting, start doing. So recently, um, as, as I just said, I'm in my late fifties. Recently, I have come to the conclusion that, um, dog grooming is not something that I'm going to be able to do to my old, old age. Um, I've been having some lower back issues. So I've decided that maybe I need to find another way to make some money as I get older, because to be quite honest with you, I don't have much of a retirement and I'm not really very excited about the idea of social security, as you can imagine. 
So I have started another endeavor and it's, um, I've been publishing word searches and coloring books on Amazon. Um, this has been challenging, which is good. I, I enjoy the challenge because there's a learning curve and don't ever let anyone tell you that um, it doesn't take money to start a business. Um, it takes money to make money. I always heard that when I was younger and it discouraged me from starting. And I'm not trying to discourage you from anything. I think that um, you should go out there and just start doing. Uh, that's, that's my opinion and that's how I've done it. But anyway, back to the publishing. So yes, it does take a little bit of money to get started. Um, I watched a bunch of different YouTube channels and they tell you, oh, you can do this and you can do that and it won't cost any money. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, if you want things to be any kind of quality, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money. Truth. Um, so anyway, I, I started that business and I started that back in June. Uh, this is my, let's see, September, June, July, August, September. It's my fourth month. So the first month that I published, I made $5. The second month that I published, I made 16 Last month, oh no, I'm sorry. The second month, I made 29 Last month, I made 49 So far, this is um, the 16th of September and I am at $21. So yes, it's not a lot of money, but I can see it building. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out there learning. I'm, you're never too old to learn. That's my number two. Learn. Learn everything you can. Learn as much as you can. Don't limit yourself. Don't tell yourself you can't do it. Uh, how? It depends on how bad you want it. How bad do you want it? Um, if you want it bad enough, you're going to work hard at it. Um, everything that I've learned, I've learned, I'm a hands-on kind of person, so I've learned trial and error, um, and I've learned through um, YouTube videos, to be quite honest. There's a lot of good information out there. You just have to find it. So um, the third thing that I wanted to talk about was um, time. I have, as I've gotten older, time has become more and more precious to me. When you're younger, you don't think much about it. You know, it's funny, I, I look back and I think of the times, and, I, and at the time you're living it, okay, let's say my 20s, the time you're living it, you think it's going to be this way forever, but it's not going to be that way forever. It slowly changes and then it's something else. And it's that way for a while, and it slowly changes into something else. Life morphs into different things over the, the years. But when you get to a certain age, you have to understand, and you do come to a realization that time is irreplaceable. You can't replace it. Time spent with loved ones, um, you can't go back and do it again. So my third tip to you would be money will return. Time will not. So take your time. Yes, you need to make money to survive. No doubt about it. I'm not saying that. But you need to not overdo it to the point that you don't spend time with people that you love, your children, your family, you know, uh, aging parents, um, anything like that, your spouse. So that's my third tip is um, money will return, time will not. Um, the fourth one is, and I think I covered this in another video, but I can't, um, I can't stress this enough. One day, probably, I was about 50, these words came to me, and they're not novel words, they're words that, you know, but the words were, if not now, when? Because I caught myself saying, well, I'll do that someday. I'll do that someday. But then you have to realize that you're getting older. How much time is left? When is someday? So the question is, 
If not now, when will I do it? Will I ever get it done? Or will I go to my grave going, I wish I would have done such and such, whatever it is. So ask yourself, if not now, when? And I ask myself that all the time. I will um, say, oh, I'd like to do that. So my next question to myself is, well, if not now, when? Uh, for example, I have a bucket list, and I will talk about that um, in other videos. But I have a bucket list, and one of the things on my bucket list is Alaska. I managed to check that off. I'm going to post some videos of that. But I managed to be able to do that. My husband and I um, buckled down and paid off a cruise. We flew to Seattle. We got on a cruise, and we went to Alaska. That is off my bucket list. I'll talk more about that in another video. But if not now, when? If I hadn't done it now, I'm 58. If I hadn't done it now, when was I going to do it? Okay, there's no guarantee that when I'm 70, I'm going to be in good enough shape to do anything. I might be perfectly fine. My parents are, are almost 80 and they get around really well. My dad gets around like a 50 year old. He gets around as well as I do, but there's not a guarantee. Always remember, there's no guarantee. If not now, when. Okay, so the fifth one, and it's two of them combined. Um, the fifth one is stop living in fear and know the difference between fearlessness and courage. Okay, so when I say stop living in fear, it goes back to the first one that we talked about. Stop waiting and start doing and quit being afraid of what other people think. Fear is, fear holds you back. Fear will hold you back and keep you from living the life that you want to live. It's that simple. Um, so if not now, when, face your fears and understand the difference between fearlessness and courage or bravery. The difference to me is fear. Everyone, every single one of us has a fear of something. So there's no one on this earth, in my opinion, that is fearless. Fearless means without fear. No, doesn't exist. Sorry. What comes in next is um, facing your fears. Courage. Courage or bravery. There's no one out there that's fearless. Maybe a child. Maybe, I'll give you that. Maybe a small child who doesn't understand the consequences. <laughs> Excuse me. They may be fearless, you know, but after they make that mistake, let's say, uh, my daughter thought it would be fun to, when she was about two, to drive her little car over the edge of the porch. Well, you could say at that moment, she was fearless. She drove off the end of the porch. After that incident, she was with fear. Trust me, she was afraid to do it again. We learn. So we can learn to harness that fear and take the courage that we have inside of us, which we all have. We all have fear, but we all have courage as well. And you take that courage and you do the things that you need or want to do. There for a while, um, I could have let current events in the world hold me back they stress me out and keep me from doing the things that I, I really wanted to do. I could have said, I'm not going to Alaska. That's I, I'm on the East Coast. I have to go all the way to the West Coast. And then I'm going, you know, it was uh, about 4,000 miles from home, which I have to say was kind of an odd experience to be that far away from home. Um, I'm sure many of you have probably been other places. I don't know. The furthest I had been, well, I've been to Europe, so I don't know how many miles that is, but... It was an experience. I could have used the uh, political climate or the um, climate that's going on in the United States and in the world today and said, I'm going to just concentrate on that fear and I'm going to stay home. I made a conscious decision to harness that fear and be brave and courageous and do the things that I really want to do. 
I hope that you can find it in yourself also to do the things that you really want to do. Um, there's a whole world out there. Don't let, don't let everything rob you of your precious life. There's a difference between being alive and living. You've probably heard that cliche before, but it's true. So I'm encouraging you to live. I want to thank you for being here. If you liked what you saw today, please like, share, and subscribe. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day.